Oh, Gaz, what are you up to, Matty? Extra socket out there that we discussed in the meeting, just popping that in today. Oh, uh, yeah, we did discuss that, didn't we? We said we need an extra socket. Do you remember as well, we said that from now on we're going to install all of our work up to the 18th edition standards. Uh, and one of the things that we just need to think about is how are we going to protect this cable from the premature collapse of the wiring system? Because, of course, we know we've got to think about cables above ceilings, so if there's a fire, the cables don't collapse down out the ceiling. But we've got to think about all cables now, whether they're in a ceiling or coming down the wall. That's a good point. We've got a metallic clip above the ceiling. That's great. I've got absolutely no metallic clips within the trunk in itself. So it would, as you suggested there, fall away from the actual wall itself. Yeah, exactly. And of course, it's quite a safety issue for firefighters. When they come into a building, uh, if it's filled with smoke and the lights have gone off, it's all dark. They'll often navigate by putting their foot around the, the base of the wall and navigate around the room that way. So if there's a cable hanging off the wall, there's a serious chance of them getting entangled in it. Have you got a solution to the problem? We do have a solution to the problem as it happens. Uh, so should we bring the camera in and have a look at these handy little clips that we've got going on? Okay, yeah, brilliant, let's do that. So can you show me these firefly clips then, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. I've got an example of one here. Uh, these have been very kindly donated to us by David Burt of Marshall Tuflex, along with some trunking, which we'll discuss in a moment. And we're just gonna have a quick look at how these uh, can help us to meet the, the latest regulations. So we've got our piece of Marshall Tuflex trunking already fixed on the wall here. And if you have a look at this bit, you can see on the back that this piece of trunking, it looks like it's been peppered with holes. Now the reason for that is we've got our normal fixing holes, which would secure the mini trunk into the wall with. And we've also got an additional little hole next to each one, and that's been pre-drilled by the manufacturer in order to accommodate the insertion of the Firefly clip. Now what we want to think about very carefully is when we come to start fixing these clips onto the fabric of the building, we want to make sure that whatever we fix it with is also fire resistant. So for example, if we were to fit this fire resistant clip to the fabric of the building using just a normal screw and wall plug arrangement, if a fire was to break out, potentially the plastic wall plug could melt and then we'd end up with this being completely useless. So we've got a solution here at the college. One thing that we're investigating at the moment is the use of this type of screw. Now this type of screw this has been donated to us uh, by Dewalt. It's uh, their wall dog range. And the idea is that this can screw directly into the fabric of the building and that you don't need a wall plug in order to make that work. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drill a 5mm hole into the wall and then we're going to fix this using the wall dog screw. see that first clip went in pretty effortlessly. What we're gonna do now is put our second clip in. So we're just a little bit higher up on the same piece of trunk in here. So again, five mil hole, gonna be drilled into the wall. We'll do that now, taking all relevant safety precautions in terms of PPE, etc. So that's our five mil hole drilled in, no problem. And now what we'll do is insert the clip into the trunking. As you can see, I've just pulled the wire out of the way there temporarily. So these simply clip into the trunking, quite easy to get in there. And then what I like to do is if you leave the clip just hanging over the side there, that makes it a lot easier to get your cable put behind it. And then using the wall dog screw, we just screw that directly into the fabric of the building that pulls in, just make, nip that up. You don't want to over tighten these and strip out 
the fabric of the building but if you just nip that up that gives you a nice secure connection and then it's simply a matter of just pulling the cable behind the clip nice and gently make sure you avoid any nicks and scrapes to the surface of the cable and then the clip just goes inside the trunk in like so and as you can see that is really nicely retained behind there should fire break out in this area the trunking will melt the cable insulation will melt but these clips are here for the duration now and that's going to help prevent that from falling out just meeting up with the latest requirements the 18th edition so at the moment there's no official guidance on how far apart these clips are going to be spaced it's very likely there'll never be any official guidance on how far apart these clips are to be spaced it'll be down to the judgment and experience of the installing electrician what we've done here is we've spaced these quite close together just to illustrate a point here if we were going to install these on site as electricians we've taken the decision that we would rotate the orientation of the clip now if you look at the clip you can see there it's got a little return leg in order to hold the cable in the horizontal position as well so that's going to stop the cable from falling out to the left or to the right but by rotating the position of the clip the orientation of the clip we're just maximizing the potential of the clip we're making sure even more so that it won't fall out to uh, either side and then fall forward so we think that's quite a, a good way to go well that seemed really really easy in order to fit a clip that wouldn't cause the wiring system to collapse in the event of a fire, yep. hopefully therefore saving lives. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, a big problem, simple solution. Marshall Tuflex have done that for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that we've got the Firefly clips, we've got the pre-drill holes in the actual trunk in itself. Yep. And as a new installer, I'm gonna do something like that or a similar solution. Yep. Totally agree with that. However, lots of trunking systems out there or wiring systems that can collapse mm. and i would suggest at this stage this is one of those um, regulations that we're not going to say that we won't apply it retrospectively i believe that fire officers will go around installations mm. and say there's a lot of surface mini trunking a lot of cables up there that will come down in the event yeah. of a fire is there a solution for an already fitted system we've got a retrofit we have got a solution for that guys and we can have a look at that right now okay so joe what have we got going on here well, if we look on the ceiling here, we've got a piece of existing Marshall Tuflex trunking that's been screwed onto the ceiling. Again, we're in a similar situation. If fire breaks out, this is going to fall off the ceiling, could cause entanglement and the loss of life for fire fighters. So what we want to think about in this circumstance is, are the regulations to be retrospectively applied? Normally, we would say no. We feel that in this instance, it's likely that fire officers will look at situations like this and say, that's a hazard it needs sorting out rather than removing miles and miles of trunking lid and retrospectively fitting the firefly clips we were just looking at firefly have produced a separate type of clip which we've got here and this clip is designed to be fitted over the outside of the trunking as a retrofit solution so we've got one here this has again been fixed uh, directly to the structural fabric of the building uh, using screws that don't have any kind of plastic element to them there's no wall plug here this is screwed directly into that so that again if fire breaks out there's nothing there to melt and collapse and as you can see the clip just fits over the trunking and holds it in place there should fire break out now again this nicely illustrates the point we were talking about a moment ago which is if this trunking should melt then the cable could potentially slip out that way it's unlikely but it could happen so again we uh, if we were installing these on site, we would take the decision that we would alternate the rotation of the clips. So the next one along would be positioned that way around, and that would then prevent the cable from slipping out in either direction. So as you're watching this video, maybe the 18th edition has now been launched, and you can see how manufacturers and the electrical industry are taking the collapsing of wiring systems in the event of a fire really seriously. Is there any other products that we can show the people out there? Yeah, so far we've looked at the solutions for mini trunking, but Firefly also manufacture a whole range of these clips for different sizes of trunking, which is really handy. Uh, so here we've got an example that would sit inside a 50 by 50 piece of trunking, and that performs exactly the same function as the previous clip that we looked at, just on a larger scale. It'll hold the cables in there uh, solidly and securely and prevent them from falling out of the, the installation in the event of a fire. That's really good. We're not a two-man team now, so Max just walked past, so we'll just grab him in. He's really chuffed to, to make a guest appearance in the, in the video. What have you been up to, Matt? Um, th this, this week we've been doing OCUs for the assessing, um, but I've got a couple more videos on site coming out. 
on site with Matt. We've got a few more on site Matt. So look out for a few more on site with Matt as we keep trying to shoot those as well. Joe's joined the team. I'm still in the team. Matt's still with us. And we hope this video has been, been some help. help.